Hi everybody, JB here. Uh, I'm gonna, today I want to do a little uh, mini online launch of my new book, Bar Harbor, a book of uh, short stories, collection of short stories. There's the uh, cover right here, a nice vertical shot. A cover done by Casey Cowan, president of Augma Creative Media, my publishing company. Anyway, so I just have a short PowerPoint here I want to go through and uh, let's get started. The uh, first thing I always like to do is uh, show the my books. These are my five most recent here on the top row. I want to point out that Fallen on the right side there, uh, I just revised that and it's in the schedule at some time to be <laughs> re-released. And of course, Bar Harbor is on the left. And the bottom is the rest of my books. You probably remember that Losing Cotton and Living Behind Time, some of you do, uh, were recently uh, revised and released. Now, my first two books, Angels in the Ozarks and the Apostate here, uh, I've already revised Angels and the Apostate's waiting to be done. They will come into the re-release mode at some stage, not sure when. And the last book down here on the far right is a square book, local history book that I worked with, uh, helped Tony Walker with. Okay, so Bar Harbor has 18 stories in it. And I'm going to show them to you in a little collection here. You can read all the titles yourself. I'll just point out one occasionally in the in the patches or batches, excuse me. Um, in this one, Napalm Night, that's the very first story I ever got published in 1994, just a little while ago. And I'd only been writing about 25 years when that happened. <laughs> the next batch uh, of stories, a lot of people think that all my work is based on my own life, and it's not. A lot of it, <laughs> most of it isn't. But the story here, Ten Soldiers and Nixon Coming is based on an event that occurred at a New Year's many, many years ago. The next uh, batch of stories here, I'll point out from the very face of the earth that you might find that humorous story. These are mostly sci-fi and time travel. And time travel is, a, I use that as an excuse for writing historical fiction. And the last batch will have two of the two stories I'm gonna talk about a little bit more, Gorky in New York and Bar Harbor, the title of the book. Uh, the story down there out in the county, uh, that's the prequel, a short story to my uh, first book, uh, The Apostate. Okay, so look at the two stories here. We got Gorky in New York. Maxine Gorky is one of my all time favorite authors. I'm a, some of you know I'm a big Russophile. I love, particularly like the 19th century authors. Gorky is transitions across the two centuries. Uh, this story is based on his 1906 trip to New York City, where he was trying to uh, uh, drum up money for the incipient uh, Ru Russian Revolution. While he was there, they had lots of parties and faded him, and there was lots of great stuff going on. He met Mark Twain, William Dean Howells. But just a few days into the uh, tour, the trip, one of the newspapers discovered that he was traveling with a woman who was not his wife. In this sort of post-Victorian era, everybody completely freaked out. It ruined the whole tour. Uh, Gorky had to go up into upstate New York and hide out for a while, and then eventually just went back to Russia and gave it up. <laughs> anyway, one of the reasons I love this story is I had to research it just like I do historical, uh, regular historical stories. As I read all the newspaper articles I could find, all the journals at the time that covered this, there was lots of them that did. And what I did in this story is I used it for my narrator. I used Gorky's actual personal assistant, whose name I can't remember. <laughs> You'd have to see it in the book. But anyway, I use that narrator as my view of the world, what's going on. A lot of the dialogue and the things they did, almost all of it is, is real and directly from what happened. It's basically creative nonfiction, probably more than it is fiction. So I just want to mention that, that story. It's always been one of my faves. I'm not sure about other people always one of my favorites. And then the title story, Bar Harbor, this was triggered by a 1988 trip I made to New England. I ended up in Portland, Maine, rented me a car, drove up the coast to Bar Harbor, which was, the coast was fabulous. Bar Harbor was just a beautiful place. I ended up hiking up Cadillac Mountain there, looking out at the sea, absolutely amazing. And while I stayed there, I found this little motel outside of town that all had little cabins. They were all separate from each other. That was really wonderful in itself. 
And I, then during the day, I'd go hang out and do stuff in Bar Harbor, that sort of thing, come back with a bottle of wine, drink some wine, and sit there and write or take notes in the evening. It was, I really enjoyed myself. And one of the things I did that's kind of separate from all this, although I think I put it in the story, is I did go on a, a whale watching boat, and that's one of the highlights of my life. And so then, so this is a, this story is a, another Jim Finnerty story. You might remember he's the, the lead character in the, in the uh, head story of Fallen, my book of short stories, in that story, Fallen. He's sort of an alter ego for me, I think. Uh, what I want to say is Finnerty goes into town and he ends up, does a lot of things I did, but he meets this a very enigmatic woman and they have kind of a, wild relationship, brief relationship. And the reason I bring this whole thing up is this is every now and then, if you guys know me, every now and then I write a story that's got a little more than the surface narrative going on here. Maybe lots of times I do, but this is one of those. And I'd like for you, when you, if you do, and when you read it, is to think about what Bar Harbor, the meaning of the story actually is. What is it actually about? So that's it. That's all I want to do is a real fast online book launch. And uh, I like to close uh, all my presentations with this, which is a picture of all my books. And uh, I want to thank you and thank you for your time. And I appreciate it very much. And uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.